Hey gang, welcome back to Joe Daddy's Garage. Today's video is part two in the frame jig series. Now, if you saw the other video, I had bought a boat trailer with a boat on it, paid $200 for it. I didn't want the boat, didn't care about the boat, I wanted the trailer. Mainly because it's made of two by four square tubing, it's all enclosed, and it's structurally very sound. My idea is I want to take that trailer and use it as the basis for a jig for the Mustang builds. So as you know from the other video, I got rid of the boat. Uh, I'm into the trailer assembly for about 275. If you add up the cost of uh, materials, if you want to build the basic frame, you know, something for the jig to sit on, it adds up really quick. The price of metal has gone way up. So I feel like at this point, I'm further ahead. Now, along with that, the idea is if I want to take the car somewhere to get it media blasted or something like that, I can take it on the trailer jig. Two birds, one stone, right? Yeah. So I'm going to go over some of the pieces and parts that I have and some of the idea that I, that I have in mind and just show you what I'm going to do for the most part. Some of this is going to maybe weave its way into what I want as an end result. I will say I have watched some other videos. Um, Rusty's Mustang Garage, he has done a series on building a frame jig and it is really super nice and, and heavy duty and I understand you know the purpose of that and it makes perfect sense. For me, I need to have mobility so that's why I'm using this boat trailer. I also have on the lift back there the latest Mustang to show up at the shop. It's a 68, very solid car and I'm going to try to use that as a template for this jig. So let me show you what I have. So to start with, I have this boat trailer. I think the dimensions, if I remember correctly, on from the inside to inside is about 68 inches on the square portion of it. And then of course it tapers forward. The trailer itself, single axle, and it has a removable tongue on it. Now, what I liked about this again is it's all square tubing, very solid, very well built. It is a four winds trailer. I don't know the number of this series, you have to look that up if you're interested. And what I want to do is a couple of things. Uh, I'm going to add some cross bracing to this for part of the jig build. But I am considering not removing this assembly, but moving it slightly to the rear. The reason for that, if I'm around the front of the car, which will end up up here somewhere in this area, um, this is something going to be in the way. So I'm going to consider moving this rearward. Of course, that whole tongue assembly slides out of that box. The uh, trailer itself, I'm, I'm likely going to remove the fenders, and I'm going to going to remove all of the support that was here for the uh, boat. And that little roller thing, don't need it. And I may consider lopping off the taillights and relocating them if I, you know, decide to tow the trailer. So, one other thing that I'm considering is making some sort of release mechanism for the axle. If I need to get it out of the way when I'm working on the car, I want to be able to maybe remove that axle. So that'll come later, uh, and I'll come up with an idea for that. Over here, this is all scrap metal. And I know it's all rusty looking and pitted, or looks pitted, but it's actually really good metal. Uh, I've got some 2x3 square tubing, some 2x2. Two two. I've got some leftover scrap metal from, I don't even know what that's from, honestly. Uh, I, I kind of hoard metal. And all of this stuff right here was given to me. So was that. So nothing invested in that. I have this piece. Now this was some sort of workbench. I went by the local scrap metal place. And this was sitting in the pile. Um, somebody has already removed three of the legs. <laughs> and it did have uh, three quarter inch plywood on top. So I've removed that. This is made up of, I think it's inch and a half by three, two by two square tubing. And again, another, uh, I think it's inch and a half, maybe inch and a quarter uh, by two and a half, maybe. Something like that. But this is just material for the build. I paid 20 bucks for this whole thing. So that's pretty good. Over here, I have some scissor jacks. These are camper jacks. I picked these up off of Amazon. I like them because they have plates on them that you can bolt to something, like a camper. But I'm going to use these 
to support the uh, frame jig when it's on the floor and I can adjust it as necessary. So those will be attached one way or another to the bottom of the trailer and then I can let raise and lower them and they just stay with the trailer. Now looking at the car I've already shown a video on this car there's a variety of ways to do this. I've seen people use the factory mount points uh, or jig points which is like these oblong holes in the front there's some more further back like they use the uh, uh, for the floor support that location further back there is a hole here in the frame rail that was used and then I think there was one more back here that was probably used as a jig point. I don't know that I'm going to do that necessarily. Uh, I like the idea, but I'm kind of experimenting as I move forward. What I am considering is using the shackle mount point in the rear and also the mount point for uh, the spring in the front. Those are rigid locations and you can put a bolt in them, have a vertical brace, kind of secures everything in place. Moving to the front, I've got a couple of different ideas. I did watch some videos of somebody else doing one of these. They used the mount point for the steering box and the mount point for the idler arm. So that's a consideration that I'm going to look into. Um, they also had made a L bracket mounted to where the uh, uh, bumper brackets mount and it came forward and it dropped straight down. That works, but I'm kind of leaning towards doing something a little different up here. I do like these points, but I like it more as a being supported somehow. And if I turn my hand around, like an L bracket that gives a height location more so than the weight being on these bolt studs. So I may come up with something as I move forward, but I really want to index the frame rails high and low, and then I can figure out more in getting them fore and aft in the right location. So what I need to do at this point is I'm going to remove the exhaust off of this car, um, and I'm also going to remove the rear axle, leaf springs, and at the minimum, I haven't decided just yet, but at the minimum I will remove the tires and wheels off the front and may have to take loose some of the front suspension just to see how things are going to work out. That trailer, another thing, patience for the uh, A-pillar. That trailer at the turn where it bends forward or burnt bends in is almost dead on in alignment with these bolt holes on the A-pillar. So if you picture it, that tongue is going to come in at an angle towards the front of the car. I know it's kind of hard to visualize that very well, but coming across this location is where the... the uh, boat tongue or a trailer tongue will end up. So let me get started on a few things. I'm going to cut up this, make sure all these pieces are loose, work on getting loose the uh, rear axle and all that sort of thing on the car, and then I'm going to roll a trailer in here and uh, try to take some measurements and show you how that's going to work. Another thing I also need to do is level the car on my two post lift. And to do that I will probably use this support stand with a threaded uh, post on the top and what I can do is come underneath the car um, lift it up off of the lift I know it's risky to do that in most cases but I'm going to lift it a little bit off the lift and then I can adjust the pads on my four post lift and that'll help me level up the car so lots to do but uh, let me get started okay just some quick progress here I have removed the exhaust and I separated the bottom end of the shock absorbers. Also all of the brake hardware came loose very easily so all that's out of the way for the brake, uh, parking brake I should say. Uh, I have separated the brake line from the hard line on the body and I started taking these bolts out and you know what, these things broke loose and just came right out and the bolt itself will turn just with the ratchet <laughs> I can't believe it stuff like that just doesn't happen back here same thing 
shackle nuts broke loose came off so I have to drive those out obviously same thing on this side very surprised at that normally these things you just can't get out without cutting them off or something so so the rear end is out and I must say I'm quite pleased that the shackles and the main bolts up front gave me no trouble at all so with that out of the way I started looking at some things and I will need to remove the shock absorbers which is pretty minor I think and I was looking at my ideas that I had for the back here uh, again I've looked at some other videos and stuff and one of my ideas was to make a rigid mount that went to the shock or the uh, shackle mount but I went and got some three quarter inch all thread and that is really close to fitting the exact diameter of that hole so what I'm thinking I may do is make some posts out of the three quarter and put it on top of whatever I use for my post in the back and then put some jam nuts on it so that I can adjust it if I need to. The same way up here, uh, I thought about using those holes as well, but I would much rather use the forward shackle mount and a piece of two by three, I think it is, fits this perfectly or perfectly enough, let's say. Up front here under the floor supports, I think I'm going to do the same thing. Use some of this, and that'll give me those locations. And then all the way in the front, a little bit of a bind here. This doesn't fit in that hole very well. So I may have to go back to the idea of making that L bracket that I was talking about previously. Um, and then on the midsection of the frame rails, I'm kind of undecided if I'm going to do something with that, or if I may consider using these lower control arm mounts because if those are in a fixed location and that piece is normally attached to the rail that's one thing that may work uh, if I look at doing a Mustang 2 style suspension all that's going to go away so I have to consider what I can use again with the uh, locations I have that are available so anyway I'm going to get the shocks out of the way and then I think I'm going to roll the trailer in and see how it looks underneath the car. Alright, so let's look at where things are at this point. Of course I have the trailer under the car where I want it. I feel like it's in a good location. And I was lowering the car to figure out how high I wanted it off of the boat frame. Or the, you know, the boat trailer. And I realized that I had a little bit of a problem. Lowering this down, I would have trouble with the tire on the trailer. So let's say I brought this down and had everything in place. With the arms in place, I could not pull the trailer out because the tires would hit. And I was thinking, what, what do I need to do? I thought about flipping the axle on the trailer so it would raise the, the trailer frame up higher. And then I got to thinking a little more and I said, wait a minute, these arms are removable. So I can bring this down quite a bit yet, uh, build what I want for post, and then take these arms completely off of the lift and be able to pull this out. So I think that's going to solve that problem. As I pointed out, I will be having additional bracing. Uh, I'll be welding that in in different places. And also, I talked about building a post support for the A-pillar. And that'll go in line roughly where this arm is. And I could reconfigure these arms uh, slightly. I could bring them out to the underside of the pinch weld and that might help with some of this situation, but currently I'm not too worried about that. So later on I can add this vertical support onto the A-pillar. Here what I want to do is weld in this piece across the two uh, main rails, and then I will build a vertical piece and use at least one if not two of these bolts to have a, a, a stop point, let's say, for the back half of the frame rail. Up front here, I'll probably do the same thing. I'll put a piece across here, and then I looked at different designs for this, and one I saw recently I liked a lot. They basically added spacers here where the bolts would go, 
so you can clear this flange and built a plate between these two and then went straight down to the post that'll be on the frame. So I think that's going to work uh, at least for the front section. Now in the middle of the car I still am considering putting in a support for the floor supports because of the holes that are there I'm able to use those as well. Um, not sure how critical that'll be but that is something I'm considering. Now you'll see that I have this piece of tubing just standing up underneath the car. Basically that's 2 by 3 square tubing and that actually fits the pocket for the spring shackle. So I don't have it in there right now, the tubing is a little bit too uh, tall, I need to cut it down, but it will slip into the spring shackle and I can use the factory bolt for that and of course I can weld it to the uh, cross member here. Almost right in line with where I need it and I'm sure it'll be close enough uh, for what I'm doing. And here in the back I had a couple different ideas and I'm still kind of rolling things around in my head. I talked about putting in the bolt, uh, all thread, in this location. And I may reconsider that. Um, that's a good idea. And it allows for some adjustment. But I don't know that I want that. I don't know if I really need the adjustment. So I can use the uh, mount hole for the rear shackle. And what I may make is a, a channel that will slip up over it and be welded to this or bolted to this because you want to be able to take things apart pretty easily and if I make a channel that fits around this uh, I saw another video where they had bolts going through this piece and basically clamping everything together so that's what I'm considering at that point so with how things are it's very likely I can leave the front suspension in place and not have to take any of that off right now so I think that'll be the end of this video. I know I didn't get as much done as I wanted to, but I did get the basics in place and I'm pretty happy with the results so far. Obviously there's a lot of talking and finger pointing and stuff like that, but there's a lot more to go and I don't want to make a two hour video to try to explain all this. So there will be a part three in this, uh, but I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank my patrons for supporting me. If you would, leave a thumbs up Leave a comment, let me know what you think about this video, and until next time, take care of yourselves. See ya.